Welcome back to my channel, Debt Free CF. This is going to be a kind of fun little peek if you are really into data or if you're a nerd and have never really considered over the course of a year what all of your budgeting information looks like. But I am a nerd and I totally love data and I wanted to see what my percentages kind of fall into. I've done this two or three years not always as accurately I didn't feel as I have this year. I feel like this year has been really accurate. So basically in my spreadsheet, and I'll just um, kind of go back for a peek or two, um, we've got like my, well, that's a bad example. <laughs> um, here's a better example. Okay, so I've got my left and right columns, um, what I brought in, estimated expenses I'd be spending, and then my um, actual spendings, and then all of my tracking. And some of this is um, a little bit different color coded, and it is old. So there's been some changes recently. Well, what I did is I took some of those months. So for example, the grocery column of actually spent groceries from July and then from August and then from September. You can see how some of this is changing as it evolves. And all of those different months, I added them up together. So you can see here in my formula bar that I reference back to the different pages or the different tabs of the spreadsheet, so each sheet, the January sheet, the February sheet, and so forth, and get all of the data. And you can see that some of the letterings change, like here it's B and here it's C. It just has to do with where it ended up being on that particular month's sheet with how it was laid out. So I went through and I added up all of the months together how much income was received that was from my job, how much other random income um, if I sold something or if I was gifted some birthday money, random things that I hadn't planned for but were money that I received. And then I calculated how much I spent in rent. That one was just a given, so that wasn't too difficult. Plus I also calculated it in terms of my half of the rent. So I do have a roommate that splits the rent. So this was not rent for the physical location that we live. It was how much I contributed to rent in the entire year. Then how much I spent on groceries, how much I spent on my half of the utilities, how much I spent for um, gas in my car, how much I paid for my phone bill, how much all of the different expenses for all three pets added up to, and then part of it was also divided in half, but there was one part where there was a really expensive dental fee um, when my dog had to have um, a tooth extracted and some teeth cleaning, and I paid that in full this month for car insurance over the course of the year, and then all of my other spending. So um, personal items from uh, either trinkets on vacation or random when I needed shampoo, or I bought a new shirt, whatever. That all falls into the miscellaneous. I could break it down more than that, but I don't feel like I actually spend all that much on any given category that it would really make sense to break it down more. So I just put it all together. It's also one of the budget items where it, I could do the most in terms of cutting things out if I just didn't want to buy myself anything. And then I also calculated taxes. This was um, how much I paid uh, to the state and got back from federal and what, whatever, how it evened out. And then the amount that I personally contributed to my Roth IRA directly in the 12 months. Now, you'll notice that this isn't 5,500 in terms of maxed out on my Roth IRA, and that's because I'm only going through the 12 months of 2017, because this is a look back at 2017. Maybe I should put that in here. Um, even though it's at the top of the page and it's on the tab and whatever, I'll put it in here too. Looks fun. Okay, so in total, after taxes, had income of roughly 27000 I was pretty much almost working a minimum wage job. Um, I was making more than minimum wage, but I live in California and minimum wage is not something that you can live off of. And this is also um, quite a bit of a pay cut to do the one year at the job that I was working at um, as a transition between I used to teach and then I was going into technology and I needed a way to prove some skills, also get 
the time to train myself and study up and then switch to something more accurately paying for my abilities and just where I need to be in terms of finances. Then the total amount with all of the different categories, including things that were spent, quote unquote spent, where money was sent to a savings account or sent to a Roth IRA account, all of that was roughly 26,000. And so that means there's this strange unaccounted for like 1,200, which um, part of it might be rounded numbers, part of it might be that I thought I had doubled categorized and so it maybe it got left out. I'm not exactly sure. That's part of why I say this isn't 100% accurate, but this is definitely more accurate of a peak than I've had in previous years where sometimes I've had like 3,000 unaccounted and I'm like, how is that even possible? But it could be, you know, like I get change from a purchase and it's a dollar 80 and then it sits on the counter. Right, so it's not in a bank account, so I can't count it, but I I still have the money. Or there's like, sometimes I'll pull cash out of forty dollars, but I only end up using thirty two, and then there's eight dollars that haven't been used, and then I don't account for that later. So um, that's my best guess as to where the unaccounted amount comes from. But then I calculated that for the Roth IRA and then some of the other stuff that just stayed in sinking funds, um, there was a, an amount saved or invested of about fifty five hundred. Um, and then there's also the amount that was withheld per paycheck. Um, so I calculated that partly for taxes to try to see what bracket I'm in and so forth. It, it's not a number that really goes into the pie. Um, and then in terms of my annual savings, I have a little comparison chart that just shows the 3700 goes into Roth IRA and then about half that at um, about 1800 was for general savings, which is in sinking funds and being used for, you know, future purchase of a car or repairs or whatever. And then I took all these numbers and just made them into a pie chart, which then gives me the percentage. I could instead calculate percentage as a column, but um, I kind of also like the visual aspect of that. So here's my pie chart. In 2017, I was able to save about six and a half percent in savings. So that was just the part that goes into my own bank account. And then I also had about a 14% into my Roth IRA. Now, if you happen to follow Dave Ramsey or Susie Orman or a number of other financial advisors, a lot of them say to put 10 to 15 to 20% of your total income into retirement. So I'm pretty much on track with that making almost a 15% retirement contribution. And then additionally on top of that, actually saving more into just general accounts. Now, one thing that I noticed maybe about a year and a half ago was that I was trying to think that these two together were actually 15%. And so mentally, when I was trying to calculate things, I was like, where's all, where's a whole bunch of my money going? Like, how am I always short on numbers? My numbers don't seem to add up. And that was because I realized, one, I was trying to use my salary calculation as my income, but that wasn't what I was seeing in a check to me because 3% or 5% or whatever I needed as a withholding or basically a forced contribution to a retirement account with my company was already being pulled out. So I wasn't actually budgeting off of 100%. I was already budgeting off of, let's just say 94%, say 6% was going to retirement. So I was, I was budgeting off of 94%. But it also wasn't 94% of my salary. It was 94% of what would be my income aside from taxes. So pretty good in terms of on track for this. And that's also saying something considering that I have for the year of 2017, my income is less than $30,000. It is very difficult. Absolutely have to have a roommate. Um, would probably even prefer if I could find a slightly cheaper place to rent, but I do actually have a really good deal considering that there's two of us in the amount of space that we have. But if I was just renting a room, which means I wouldn't have shared space, like I wouldn't have the ability to use the living room whenever I want, be a little bit less comfortable, but I could knock off about 
150 to 200 dollars on my rent and so then you multiply that by 12 and i could be saving you know a, a couple thousand dollars in rent the trade-off for the comfort and so forth not entirely worth it to me and then the fact that I'm really disciplined especially making videos or just doing the monthly budget whether or not I'm making a video about it holding myself accountable that's the only way I'm able to get this 15% saved as a side note I'm not even maxing out like in this 12 months calculation I'm not even maxing out my Roth IRA the amount I could put in there is 5500 but that would be well over the 14% if I was also trying to save anything for being able to make future purchases. Now, if I was only saving the 5500 then that would be about 20%, and that's all I would be doing. And it would all go to retirement. I wouldn't be able to use any of it. When it comes to having smaller budgets, there's definitely some difficulties, but it, it is doable. If I had kids, it would be a completely different story, especially if I didn't have anybody else helping. But I do have dedicated pet expenses, obviously not the same amount as children, but when you look at like about 1100 in a year, that's about $100 a month. It's like 85 a month, so there's there's some expense there too, which is also to say if you aren't willing to give up 100 bucks a month, you probably shouldn't have pets because you could even have an emergency. I've been very fortunate that amongst all three animals, I've only had one emergency ever and it was under $1,000, but it was still a stressful thing of like, well, now I have to, you know, suddenly spend $800 on the medical expense. So, and, and that could happen with myself too. I broke my leg a couple years ago. I had great medical insurance, it only ended up costing me about $350, but had I had to pay out of pocket, I don't even want to think about how much it would have been. The groceries were about 8%, just a little bit under, and I went over in my grocery budget a lot. Part of it was that I just lump restaurants and groceries together. To me, it's not that important to distinguish them because they're both food, but if you wanted to put restaurants out in um, miscellaneous or, you know, fun money or entertainment totally could there are a couple times where I had specifically made plans with friends and the, the thing we were gonna do was go out and that became kind of like a miscellaneous expense but um, groceries is about 8% now the more money you make the less percent groceries is actually gonna be and then it also depends on your eating habits I ate a lot of fresh fruit vegetables salad um, I for almost half the year, a little bit over half the year of 2017, I was not purchasing meat, dairy, or eggs um, because I'm almost full vegan. I eat cheese because it's difficult for me to give it up. I like cheese. <laughs> um, but that also has helped save some money. Utilities and phone bill and so forth, uh, those in terms of my budget for the half that I pay is about 5% if you add them together. Again, that percent is going to be flexible depending on what your actual income is. And I'll do a um, video of the comparison at the end of 2018 as well. And I'll have a much higher income in 2018. And then pets is roughly 4%. Car insurance, 1.5%. That one just kind of is, I laugh at that. I have really good, cheap car insurance. Income is low. You know, my car insurance looks like it's a big thing. I mean, look at the slice of the pie on that. But anyway, um, taxes, super tiny, which is good. The miscellaneous and so forth is just over 15, just under 20%. Rent though, like if, if you subscribe to different financial thoughts, your shelter, your rent should really close, be closer to 30% probably even closer to 25%, especially if you don't live in California. But in California, maybe about 30%, and I am quite a bit over that. So that definitely eats up a lot of my income, which kind of motivates me to want to just be able to buy. But the struggle is that you need so much more saved in order to buy. And then on top of that, like you've depleted your savings because you put it in a down payment, but you're still paying like 90 or 95 percent of what you would be paying in rent as mortgage like you're really saving s a small amount mortgaging instead of renting 
but that's a whole nother thing. Um, yeah, so this is just kind of a nerd's numbers to take a look at what spending was for me last year. And I'm excited to see what it's going to change and look like. Hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any comments, I'd love to read them and get back to you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. This is Debt Free CF. Thanks for watching.